What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Three Way Podcast of Jerks. And joining me today is Show. JP, aka Linkster 101. And of course, JD, aka Mr. JD McKinney. I uh, keep it simple. He keeps it simple. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we got actually a really thick podcast episode for you today. And we're yes, going to just jump yes, right research. into it. We're going to start off today with pop culture. All right. Damn, that was actually pretty good. Um, just to make a quick note of it, we're going to be talking about the Twitch blackout on the Hump Day show. So, because there's actually a lot to talk about there, and we figured it's a good opportunity in the Hump Day show since we're able to take a topic and just go really in depth with it. And it, there's a lot there. So, we're going to go ahead and say, watch this week's episode of the Hump Day show for more information on the Twitch blackout. Uh, so, check it out. That'll be this Wednesday. Uh, but moving on from there, Dr. Disrespect, sticking with Twitch, has, I mean, this is big news right has now. been permanently banned. Now, there's a lot of rumors flying around. Nobody knows for sure what happened. But even Dr. Disrespect himself. E- apparently, even the doc doesn't know what the hell happened. But, yes, Dr. Disrespect has been permabanned. And... I, I can say for sure it's true because I even like I'm like what I well, went on Twitch and looked up for his name gone emotes gone like oh shit <laughs> Twitch Twitch sent out a statement um, they said as is our process we take appropriate action when we have evidence that our streamer has acted in a violation of our community guidelines or terms of service this applies to all streamers regardless of status or prominence in the community he did something bad according to Twitch. From what I'm seeing, this is just from the statement that they released. Yeah, this uh, is. Uh, let me read this something from uh, this article from Polygon. Twitch banned public streamer Doctor Disrespect, aka Guy Beam, on Friday. The disciplinary action is notable not just because the streamer's popularity. Doctor Disrespect's Twitch channel boasts more than four million followers, but due to Beam's exclusive arrangement with the streaming platform, uh, but due to the streaming platform, well, that's a weird way to arrange that uh, sentence. Uh, the reason for Dr. Uh, Dr. Disrespect's ban is unclear. Reach for a comment. A Twitch representative did not specify what led to the disciplinary action or clarify the length of the ban or insisted uh, offer the following statement, which is what JP just read. Um, update from, I think, I believe today, 6 p.m. EDT. According to esports <laughs> reporter Rod Berschler, uh, citing sources, Dr. Yeah, quote, Dr. Disrespect has been permanently banned from Twitch, end quote. Uh, Bersal also addressed speculations that Twitch actions against Beam was part of the wave of bans related to DMCA takes downs, tweeting, and quote, it, was not. it is not DMCA, end quote. But, uh, it, yeah, it's just really big, dude. It's yeah. too, it, it's really big, and specifically with all the things that are going on right now with Twitch, um, I know they're being sued uh, from California with this guy who, this horny guy who, you know, sees sexual mm-hmm. stuff on Twitch and can't stop himself. But this doctor disrespect four million views. He has a great contract with Twitch. This is, if not the best Twitch streamer for them, mm-hmm. and for them to do this, I just feel like it has to be something serious. Now, there's a lot of rumors. There's one. Well, the, I mean, he has been banned before or suspended, but, but not permanently. So not I, be- permanently. I believe that this this ban has something to do with that. Maybe it's like a third strike thing where. They're not gonna let him come back because of that, but yeah, it's it's a huge thing. In 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 this past week too, or in the week before, we've been having these things with Twitch blackout, which is what we're gonna talk about. But the reason I'm bringing that up right now is because a lot of it has to do with now Twitch becoming more of a, uh, how was it in high school? Uh, no, uh, oh, damn it, what's the phrase they use? Like, like when when they said there was like no uh fucking. Damn it! I forgot what it's called. But anyways, they're just they're just gonna ban anybody. They're like, we know what? No, zero tolerance. No, zero tolerance. Yeah. Zero, zero tolerance. tolerance. Zero tolerance. <laughs> yeah, they're doing like. A Damn, zero... it took you that yeah, long, <laughs> dude. It's been a, it's been a long time. Ten plus years. You have to get started. Yeah. Uh, so they're doing a zero tolerance, is what I believe. So if anything, I believe they're making Doctor Disrespect a uh, a scapegoat. An they're using him as yeah. an example. Yeah. He is the one of the bigger uh, streamers on their platform who just signed a brand new contract, I believe, in March. Like, it, it's 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 like a precedent for anybody else trying to fuck up or do something stupid, like like what they've been talking about, what they've been trying to like counter uh, uh, this uh, this past couple of days. They they made several statements, but again, we're gonna get into that in, in the Humday show. So yes, Doctor Disrespect banned. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, and, and and I think with him, I think everyone knows exactly because he's not. He has never really tried to hide it. Like mm-hmm. we know that he, he, you know, he had issues mm-hmm. with his wife, and that's personal for between him and his wife, yeah. and whatever that happened between them. Um, I know that you know in, in, in E three he he went he went into the restrooms. He was all pumped up. It, it, I mean, I get it. You make a common state. You're not supposed to be filming in the restroom, but mm-hmm. you know he got banned for that. Like he's been pretty open about all this stuff and. He's even talked about, like, you know, in his streams, like, how it's been difficult. But for this to be this type of way, I don't think it's three strikes you're out because there's too much money involved. I, I think that's my issue with it, I, that there's too much money involved. For him to lose all this, it has to be something extreme. Mm-hmm. J.D.? I don't really follow the guy that much. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I know of him. I've seen something, some of the stuff he does. Mm-hmm. I mean, with a name like Dr. Disrespect, obviously, I mean, that automatically makes me not really want to watch anything he's going to be doing. Because I mean, it's right there. It just makes it means he's probably going to be one of the more. That's what I guess what we call him a troll personality on on the internet. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like he's just trying to try and do stuff to piss people off. Now, I mean, I, I know I have seen some of the some of the things that he's done, when, and I, and I do realize that that's a character. That's maybe that's a not character. Him personally, right. that is a character. I do re, I do recognize that fact because I have seen him out of character before, and that is not who he is. So I mean, I have respect. I mean, I have, I'm okay with the person himself, just the character I don't like. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's you're you're right. It's got to be something huge, especially after you just signed a big old deal with him, not not more than a few months ago, and then all of a sudden now he's he's gone on perma ban. But I don't agree with the fact that I mean, maybe maybe he does know he's not allowed to talk about it. If that's the case, that's what he should have said, you know. But mm-hmm. if they haven't told him what's going on, that's kind of a, a failure on their part. They should have at least said, hey. Well, that's a rumor. That's a yeah, rumor. I know. Well, he, he said he said, he said it himself. I don't know. I've yeah, because. Please. There was a, a clip on Twitter that um, Tim the Tatman put out that he that he actually reached out to Doc after it happened, and that he said that basically Doc told him he didn't know what was going on, but he's looking into it. Like, yeah, that, that's, so, I mean, that's that's all he knows. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's, we have, yeah, we we have all these people like Shannon Z Killer putting up they know what happened, and then like people get on her ass, and then she just a tweet like, no, I don't really know. Like we have to be careful of that. That's why we're just yeah. seeing rumors. We don't really yeah, know. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not really gonna pay attention to those type of rumors because there's a bunch of rumors. One of them is that is that he he said that COVID wasn't real and that he's a real doctor, so he's like spreading that. <laughs> so I'm like, I, don't, I, don't know. I, I mean, I kind I kind of feel like that's something he would probably say, but he I don't know if he would say, but uh, yeah, like, but the the thing is too, this month actually, like, to I think to combat the whole like um not not combat but like be a part of the movement of the black lives matter movement he actually had all his donations and shit that were coming in like anytime monetary income that everything for the month of june was going to be donated so like it's 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 crazy of what's happening i don't know what happened i like i i i you know i'm gonna reserve like judgment on this guy until we see like like an official word either from him from twitch or whatever whatever the case may be but uh, I just I just feel like this is part of just Twitch's zero tolerance rule right now, and yeah. just he's he's the example, you know, he's gonna be made an example for everybody else to mm-hmm. follow along because there is a lot of big streamers, and of course, like like when you're making millions or whatever thousands of dollars a month a year, like you you tend to get an ego, you tend to do these like things that you wouldn't do if you know yeah. you, you wouldn't be out of pocket to do if you were like broke as fuck, you know, but uh. We'll see. That the story is still developing. Definitely going to be bringing it up on the Humday Show if any new word comes out. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully there's more, more information when this when this uh, launches. But we'll see. Yes. Yeah. So moving on to the next part here, Angry Joe. Speaking of allegations, was also uh, hit with an allegation himself of being uh, uh, showing predatory. Uh, was it? How, how, what's the terminology for this? Like, pre- advances, predatory advances. I guess. Yes, yeah, I think that's what she said. Yeah. Yeah, so let me read this from gamesindustry.biz. Uh, pull it up here. Uh, Joe Vargas, host of the Angry Joe Show, which has 3.2 million subscribers on YouTube, was also accused of predatory behavior by female streamer Wookie Monster, uh, who claimed that Vargas leveraged his power in an attempt to exploit her for sex. Now, uh, at first she, she wrote this out, uh, again, this, I believe again, this, uh, I mean, it all ties back to the Twitch blackout stuff. Cause a lot of people were coming out, uh, with all the, the accusations, things they've been through mm-hmm. now, 
now yep. first of all let me just go ahead and say that i'm not i'm not on the don't believe them in uh train i'm more of a uh you know proven until uh innocent until proven, proven guilty. guilty because yeah. I, I mean i agree right now there's a lot of cancel culture out there twitter seems to want to be like judge jury and executioner and it's and it's really hard to find the real to from the fakes so that being said we're moving on to the story so she said basically that one day they were uh i forgot what convention it was what what like gathering was but uh, uh, east pack it was, east it was one of the pax events uh mm -hmm. so he goes to go uh take a shower in his room she's there but if supposedly well, no, no, uh -huh. no no that, that that's not well so they met up at a party before the event before his panel uh they started talking they exchanged phone numbers uh, she, he, they, she, she was the one who hit him up at night that she wanted to talk without drinks involved. And he was like, sure, I have no problem with it. So, uh, he invited her to his panel and she brought her friend and supposedly according to her during the, after the panel was over, he grabbed her and dragged her to uh, the hotel room, promising that they were going to go out to eat and have a good time. Uh, during that time frame, she states that while he was in the shower, he invited her to come over and, uh, she thought. He was funny. She said he was funny, and mm -hmm. he said the offer was still there. They end up going out to eat. They meet all these YouTube executives. They have this exchange. Uh, supposedly, she she tries to text her boyfriend, um, and Angie Joe's like, "No, let go ahead and keep your phone down. It's very rude." They end up going to a party. Uh, in that party, she says that Angie Joe's grabbing her and pushing her around, like being really close to her. Anytime she talks to a male, he goes over and tells him, "Hey, this is the girl I'll be ending up with the night with." Um, she somehow finds, because uh, when they enter that party, she gives up her phone and her purse, according to her, like they take it away from her. She finds it. She texts her boyfriend. It's just this big hoopla. And she writes this essay. Um, and it pretty much like, uh, there's a lot of inconsistencies in that story uh, for her. Uh, but go ahead, Elias. Go ahead. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, 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 no. You're fine. No, no. Keep going. Here. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of inconsistencies in the story. She wrote a big page essay, um, and she basically, you know, wanted to make sure that everyone knows his predatory action. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as it went up, you know, Twitter. As soon as it went up, people on Twitter were like, some of them, these what they call simps, were like, oh, she's in the right, whatever, whatever. And like, they were even posting it. And Angel's like, no, none of this is true. And so he did the smart thing that every guy should learn how to do in these types of situations. When you have a lot to lose, you get a lawyer. He got a lawyer. He, he let everybody know, hey, I, I didn't do this, but I got my lawyers on. I'm not going to say nothing further. Uh, two days later, he released a statement. And in his statement, she said he was wrong and uh, that he has proof. And that even during that night, she was taking pictures and putting them on Twitter that he was never around. Um, he basically kind of counteracted against her and his lawyer said not a cease and desist. A day later, after that, she's taking everything down. I'm talking about she took down the whole essay. She's backpedaling. She's like, I never said he was uh, sexual harassing me. I just said he was predatory actions. And, you know, I'm going to have to take a step away from Twitter and Twitch. So he did the right thing by getting lawyers. And the lawyers intervened and, and made sure that her bullshit was not was not going to affect his career. And that's what every guy, every Twitch guy needs to start learning how to do. There's, you can't. When you're that popular, when her you're that big, you... bro, like you, you well, still don't know. Like yeah. at this point, you're you're already on Joe's side. But mm -hmm. to be honest, okay. you you don't that's know fair. you don't know if he's telling the truth or not either. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm true. saying. That, that's a that's a good point. That's a good point. That's but that's that's what is, cancel culture difference... is doing, though. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like there is no proof yet. Let the lawyer do their jobs, and yeah. and then let let all this shit like unravel before like we're mm -hmm. over here calling her shit bullshit when we don't know that well, that's for sure. Or not. Here's here's my point of view. Because if I have proof and I put those allegations out there and you counter it and you sit on a cease and assist, I'm getting my lawyers and I'm going to show you the proof. And at the end of the day, it, it shows out. But for you to backpedal, to start deleting shit, that shows that you were in the wrong. When you do that, when you actually have the proof and it really happened and it is true, normally you tend to have proof and you can go ahead and provide that. Throughout the whole story, she says she had no proof. So I don't know. It's just a lot of inconsistency in the story. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, like, like, I don't, there's a lot of, I, I get your point where you can't always believe everybody. You have to let, you know, proof come out, whatever. But in this case, it just sounded to me, to me personally, it just sounded like bullshit. So, you know, she, she backpedaled, she took that off, but he has to be aware. And hopefully this is a lesson learned for him, for Andrew Joe to, to make sure that you can't just go out and party with people and do certain stuff like that. Yeah. Like try to stay within your inner circle. Yeah, true. Yeah. I, JD? I, uh, and, and, and like you said, you know, he got a lawyer. I'm, I'm pretty sure he already had lawyers if he's dead. 
if he's as big in the YouTube community as I believe he is, he's already had lawyers on hand uh, because those guys usually do because they have to be prepared for this. They have to be prepared for copyright infringement and that kind of thing, so they want to make sure, sure. it's ready. So I'm pretty sure he already had the lawyers ready to go. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, I grew up in the 90s where this was happening then, too. You know, you would see, see ladies mm -hmm. making allegations of rape and stuff like that to get attention, and then they were later on discredited. And, I mean, I am no way saying automatically believe the victim, automatically believe the person being prosecuted. I want to see evidence, and I want to see everything that comes out first, and innocent until proven guilty. And, unfortunately, when people do this, though, it really – hurts those who have an actual incident happen to them. Right? Yes. You know, things, because now people are going to automatically go, oh, well, she's probably just making it up because, yeah. you know, these other people over here were doing that. And it, it it's it's hindering – it's not just hindering the people who are being uh, uh, Good point. brought up against. It's hindering anybody else who has had that happen to them, and they need to stop. It, this, this whole attention culture needs to go away as well. The cancel culture, the attention mm -hmm. culture, it, it's it's – it's there's there's an issue that needs to be dealt with even even further than that, mm -hmm. and the false allegations just have to be dealt with, even harsh even as harshly as if it was the person who was who had actually done something wrong, you know, the person who had actually done uh, rape somebody or sexually abused somebody. If it's if somebody brings up a false allegation against them, they need to be handled just as harshly as if the person had actually done it as, as in the in the first place. Well, you know, I mean, tw tw there's, there's no there's no accountability for it right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Twitch is getting yeah, Twitch is getting hit hard right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean I that's know. why that's why it's better for them to be like, you know what, I'm, we're gonna ban you, then look into it. That way, you're not making any money right now, and we're not making any money off of you right now. And then later on, like it turns out, it is true, and that we made money off of you, and you made money while this has been out there. Like we're both in trouble. Well, so for them, for them, it's easier just to be like, all right, we're gonna stop it right here. We're gonna look into it, and then like figure it out. But a permanent suspension on that case, I don't think makes sense because you need to just uh, yeah. I say temporary. Yes, of course, temporary suspend all, well, all, all, all anything. But it, then once it, if anything has been well, they proven, haven't they haven't said perma ban, but everybody's saying yeah. perma ban. I mean, okay. to be honest, they, Twitch is saying they're banned. They didn't say how long. Yeah. I mean, look, there's there's a situation with Tom Castle. Um, you know, you know, oh, there's syndicate. there's Ryan. Yeah, there's there's Ryan Terry the. Karate. There's just so many, so many but things going on right now. Pro Syndicate, Tom Pro Syndicate Castle actually did come out and say, "Yeah, it's kind of true." So <laughs> be careful. I mean, with like that I one. said, no, 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 no. <laughs> what I'm saying is basically that this this whole type of issue has been surrounding Twitch a lot these past couple of weeks. I think there's a lot going on there, and it's that's just why shiny. that's why we're gonna talk about all that. Yeah, Wednesday because it's there's a lot there's a lot going on. It's a lot. It's a big conversation to have right there. Yeah. But we're, let's move on to this next part here. Michael Keaton in talks to be Batman in DC. Uh, Batman. What? <laughs> I don't know. That's what he sounds doing. like. He's like, no, I'm talking about. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> oh, oh, so Michael I, Keaton. Yeah. So <laughs> instead, of, instead of it being uh, uh, what was it Ben Affleck, it's gonna be Michael well, Keaton now. Oh, well, really? it's it's a sh in the show, in the show. No, no, no. This, is, in the movie. this is the next. This is the next DC Flash. Oh, movie. this is for the Flashpoint movie. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense because Flashpoint. the Flashpoint is also like alternate universes, or alter Earth. So, like, if they yeah. wanted another Batman, they really could. Like, that's that's kind of like the easy out for not having uh, Ben broke, Affleck. And yeah. they broke the ground for this with the Flashpoint or the flash with the Crisis. Uh, and so yeah you know so so if he comes back i think that would be real cool yeah I think that would be so. real cool. yeah that'd be interesting to watch uh they said old man batman they <laughs> they haven't like released a time for when this movie's moving out uh, coming out is yeah. it no it's just in talks right now i haven't, I haven't seen anything about uh, being it. Been, okay, i think okay. it's i think it's looking for 2021 maybe if it does come out okay Actually, let me, let me double check. I'll, let me put it up on IMDb real quick. I can, sure. I can tell you. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big uh, Flash fan, so I, I'm, I would be so down to watch this. And Ezra Miller, though, I'm kind of like, I, you know what? I thought you were a good actor. Maybe you should move on to another person. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's because maybe maybe I have a bad taste in my mouth because of the movies he's been doing. The uh, What's it called? The uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I'm kind of like, uh... Okay, first off, <laughs> that's, that's just horrible writing and horrible directing. That's not... Come on. Come on, let's give, give him some credit. I mean, yeah, twenty twenty two. Okay, he hasn't really had a movie where he he's the main, like he's the main 
guy. So I think that's the, the issue actor, with me, maybe. Character, yeah. yeah, he's always been like a side character. Like, eh. All right, and, well, you know, I mean, just give it a chance. I say give it a chance. It's all the right, same. Well, we got I like two Michael... years to figure that one out. <laughs> yeah, Michael King comes. Hey, Michael King comes back. You best believe I'm watching that goddamn shit. Yeah. Uh, uh, speech, speaking of watching that gosh darn shizzle, HBO Max bans five episodes of South Park. Oh, this is yes. ridiculous. So, uh, HBO mm-hmm. Max is going to have, um, you know, the, the South Park seasons except for five episodes. Mm-hmm. And there are five episodes where South Park makes fun of certain religions, uh, certain things that. You know, back in the day, we were acceptable and funny as hell. But no, I mean, even week. even back in the day, they 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 were they were edgy even back then because that, that's that's, years, yeah. that's that's their shtick though. That that that's what they're known for is their edginess. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, but it, it it basically has to do with uh some uh you know Prophet Muhammad depictions. Um, they have other in, <laughs> other. They just have a lot of shit. I don't know what to say about South Park because they've been making fun of everybody. And yeah. For them to, yeah. You know, for them to ban five episodes is like really, really. But I mean, I don't understand it. I, I honestly am like, what the fuck? If I was South Park, I'd be like, peace. But I'm pretty sure the money is is real good. Yeah, it was a four hundred million dollar deal. So I mean, so fuck the five episodes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know, I know, uh, I guess Steve yeah. Park was saying he was upset with the fact that they were doing that, you know, for the, when, when Comedy Central released, I was thinking it was like 201 and 202 is what they said, episode 201 yeah, let and me, Here, let me read it from this article. Yeah. Uh, according to The Hollywood Reporter, uh, show co-creator Trey Parker previously said he was livid over the censorship. Quote, what pissed me off about the episodes 200 and 201 was that I thought the episodes ended up being really good, end quote, he said. Quote, we were so exhausted by it all. We were like, fuck it. Just get on the, to the next episode, end quote. So he, he was just like, you know what? Whatever. Those were the two episodes that had that they blacked out the uh, Muhammad character, Prophet Muhammad yeah. character, you know. This, they have so like, many episodes. I, mean, I don't even remember those. I, seriously. It's, it's <laughs> like, yeah. It's, I mean, like I said, they've been doing this shit for 20 years. HBO knew what they were getting when they when they exactly. you guys up. Exactly. Exactly. Why are you? Why are you going to censor these guys now? This is the whole the whole idea. This is going to hurt their brand because South Park is such a big, uh, has such a big fandom, and people are going to be like, okay, well, if you're going to do this with these guys, and you knew what you were getting, yeah. what are you going to do? Well, you know, what other what other minor stuff are you going to do with other other stuff we want to watch? Yeah, you know. But I mean, this has been going on. Disney censoring old Disney movies. Uh, oh God, don't get started on that. Man, man, it's just ridiculous. This whole censor culture, like mm-hmm. it's it's getting to the point where it's very frustrating. Um, and just annoying. So it is what it is. HBO Max ain't gonna lose shit out of this anyway. Neither is South Park. If I was South Park, I'd be like, oh well, five episodes. We still got a shitload left. That Let's was just make our money. That was the whole purpose of HBO and Cinemax and Showtime to see uncensored versions of things that you wanted to see. You know, you couldn't watch it on regular television because of the censoring. So you watched it. You know, if you watched a movie on HBO, you knew you were gonna see the whole thing: curse words, sex, nudity, everything. You're gonna see it all, you know. It didn't. It wasn't. It well, wasn't politically, mo- politically, but well, motivated. I mean, I mean, JD, you, you grew up, in, uh, you know, in the in the eighties. Yeah. I grew up in, in in the in the early nineties. In our era, that shit was just normal. Yeah. We were we were not sensitive to any of that shit. Nowadays, we have a lot of sensitive people, and and we have to accept that at some yeah. point they control yeah, certain things. So. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, moving on, The Boys <laughs> season two. Now has a yes. release date for September. Yes. So uh, the boys uh, season one came out for Amazon. I think that's their best hit. Um, where it's like an anti-hero type of story, uh, where you're cheering for the anti-heroes because they have no powers. It's like yeah. all these Batman's versus all these Superman's. It's, it's a really good show. I really encourage you guys to watch season one. It's it left with such a cliffhanger. I was like, what the flip? Mm-hmm. Okay, um, uh, and the new season two promises to be well. I saw a, a small clip oh. that they provided. Ooh. They introduced a new hero. Uh, I mean, it's 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 exciting. I, I can't wait for it to come out. It was one of my favorite shows last year. I'm pumped up for this, I, I this new season. Remember, did we ever report on this? I think it's got a third season coming out too. Uh, I'm, I'm looking. Oh, I'm looking at IMDb. It's showing seasons one, two, and three. No, Ooh. it's just. Season so I think two they're going to announce. Right, no, 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 I'm saying. I, so I think they're, I think they're got, they're signed up for season three as well. So that's actually going to yeah. be some interesting. 
And it's coming out September 4th, guys. Um, and they're going to allow a new episode available each Friday until the season finale in October 9th. And that's so, the way to do it. That's the way you keep a subscription going because you don't just release they're doing it the whole, once. Yeah. They're doing the whole mal- – They but that's the thing. They did it last year. They released it all at once, and then now they're not doing it. So it kind of bums well, me out, but I'm pumped up for it. It looks like the first three seasons are going to be released really September 4th. From the first first three episodes, first three episodes. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at release date is fourth fourth of September for two point one, two point two, and two point three. So. Yeah, they're gonna the first three episodes, the first three yeah. episodes, correct. Twee, twee, guys. All twee. right, let's number three, uh, Lord, number three. Let's end it right there for pop and move into sports. It's a home run. It's a no run. Touchdown, Touchdown Miami Dolphins. Yeah, wait, what? Uh, yeah, I sports. Can't go for it this year. All right. <laughs> it looks like the Major League Baseball PA owners clear final hurdles, 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 hurdles. Hurdle, Players hurdle, said to report hurdle. to camps July first. Uh, this is according to the ESPN article. Major League Baseball will hold opening day either July twenty third or twenty fourth. And players will head to training camps in a week after the league and the union on Tuesday agreed on health and safety protocols that will govern the sport at his, as it attempts to return amid the coronavirus pandemic. Um, so, yes, again, baseball is supposed to start in April or something like that, the spring Usually, training. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that didn't happen. Uh, players obviously want to play. Owners obviously want their money. But, you know, with coronavirus, it, it was it was messing up everything. Uh, so they both got on the table like, OK, we can come back kind of new rules stuff, but yeah. we're going to have to take some money away. <laughs> but anyways, they figured it out. Baseball's coming back. Los isn't here to get excited. Nobody else here, I believe, cares. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Not a goddamn Quick update on the uh, notes here. It's a 60-game yeah. season that will run through September yes. 27th. And they're still going to have a 10-team playoff structure. So that, that hasn't changed. Oh. Um, it's just it's just, in the, just the length of the season. So that's yeah. our blurb for that thing. All right. Congratulations, baseball. Welcome back. Moving no, on to another sport that is also coming back. 2020 NBA schedule. Yes. Baked best games, playoff races, and NBA titles. Yes, the NBA is coming back as well. It looks like everybody's getting in their – their shizzle together. Uh, again, this is from the ESPN article. After Friday's release of the new 2020 NBA schedule, it's time yes. to look ahead at the games, players, teams, and what, and that will be most compelling when the season resumes on July 30th at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex in Orlando, Florida. So they are going to do that thing then, where they're all going to just be in one place. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, Look, how many how many courts is it though? I forgot. Was it like six or something? I'm not sure, but it's a lot of courts right now. From what I'm seeing here, you got about uh, they're gonna start off July 30th. You got about eight games that each team is gonna play for the standings and the playoff hunt. Um, but we do know some players are not coming, uh, such as Trevor Reason for the Trailblazers. Uh, role players that are very good role players are not coming uh, in. But we'll see as 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 the season is about to start. Um, you know, they, they're at the Disney resort. They have a plan, a bubble plan. I don't know what all this, all of this contains. I'm not like directly there guys to fucking know. Uh, but what I can say is that they're all coming back. You have the Jazz versus Pelicans uh, on July 30th, along with the Clippers and Lakers. So it's a must watch between Clippers and Lakers. Cause y'all know LeBron James is out there trying to win a championship because you know, this is it. I think this is his last chance that he has. And hopefully the Clippers take that away from him. Because um, I love Kawhi Leonard. I don't like LeBron James. LeBron James is such a whiny little NBA player. I need swings to play and win championships. You'd rather have Michael that, you rather have that, ooh, 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 that weird ass hey, laughing hey, ass Kawhi. You know why? Because he's, he's a Terminator. He's a Terminator. He's just like, yeah. He's a lizard yeah. person. All right? yeah. He takes a bunch of role players and wins a championship. That's what that guy does. All right? Come on, man. LeBron <laughs> yeah. James. Oh, I, need, I need Anthony Davis. Yeah, I need Kyrie Irving. The way I'm looking at the, game, at the game setup, it looks like we're looking at least three courts, maybe oh, four. Three courts. Yeah, uh, okay. at, least, three at least because of the way I'm looking, just looking at the way the time set up. Mm-hmm. There's no way they could be playing some of these games at the same time, so they have to at least have three, maybe four courts all together. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Well, and and this all just shows to me who wants to win it all, uh, because at the end of the day, this is has to do with mental toughness. So mm-hmm. if James Harden's over here bitching because he can't go to the strip club, 
then that means that he's not the right player for the Houston Rockets, and maybe they need to go a different direction. This is going to show me if you really are about winning championships. If, this is what you, it's going to show me. If you're about playing the game or if you're about playing for the money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. James Harden's over here like, no, I can't be here. I'm sorry. I got to go to the strip club. Well, then you ain't the right player for the Houston Rockets. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not going to go on that one. <laughs> uh, so, yes, uh, basketball's back. Baseball's back. Are you guys excited? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, but moving on from sports, that's going to end it, actually. Uh, let's go into gaming. <sighs> man, I can't wait, guys. <laughs> this is it, man. Oh, so, no. the only one that goes pew. Damn it. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> game over. Pew, pew, pew. Uh, wait, I feel like we already. Uh, anyways, uh, game over. Uh, gaming. <laughs> so, we started off the week with uh, some uh, yes. bad news. <laughs> Mixer is <laughs> shutting down. Aww. Hey, man, give a shout out to Microsoft. At least they tried. They At did? least they tried. Yeah, they did. At least they tried. <laughs> They got uh, Ninja on their platform. I yeah. mean, they got these uh, these other streamers, and like, Trout, the, yeah. the, even though Mixer closed down, Ninja got a very good payoff. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that million. right now because Microsoft will shut down Mixer, transition users to Facebook Gaming, uh, in exchange, Project X Cloud will expand onto Facebook, which actually is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, this is from the Polygon article on Monday. Microsoft and Facebook announced that they would partner to transition users off the Mixer live streaming platform and over to Facebook gaming. Mixer itself will be winding down operations with elements of its underlying technology moving to the Microsoft Teams communications platform. By July 22nd, all Mixer sites and apps will redirect users to Facebook. In exchange, Microsoft Project xCloud game streaming platform will bring will begin to appear on the social media giant in the near future. Mixer began life as a streaming platform called Beam in 2016. I remember that. In -hmm. August 2017, it was acquired by Microsoft and quickly integrated into the Xbox One by the following spring. It was renamed Mixer in 2017. It originally signed a number of high-profile streamers, including Fortnite player Tyler, Ninja, Blevins, to lucrative uh, contracts, wooing them Away from Amazon's Twitch, Xbox, and Facebook said that Blevins and other contracted creators were not involved in this transition, which both organizations stressed was a partnership and not an acquisition. Uh, so Sounds yes. like an acquisition to me. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, the rumors were that uh, Ninja and Shroud got about $10 million in their contract, worked for like eight, six months, whatever, and they called it GGs. I mean... <laughs> That was pretty crazy. I mean, ten million dollars for a couple of months. <laughs> yeah, could have called me. Wish I could do that. Yeah. Also, that entire lifetime. Um, so I mean, yeah, like just to also put it out there. Uh, as far as like the streaming platforms, the way it kind of goes is Twitch, YouTube, Facebook Gaming, and then it was Mixer. So it kind of makes sense that Mixer is like, you know what? Let's combine with Facebook Gaming because they're actually, uh, what it actually is, is that. Mixer, it was hard for them to grow because they didn't have like, uh, they didn't have the the staple of being Twitch, uh, one of the OGs of streaming for video games. They don't have the the uh, the the per, the person uh, user base like YouTube and Facebook, who have billions of people on their platforms, not on gaming but just there, but able to advertise to those people. Like Mixer was the odd man out. Mixer was the one really trying to go after Twitch. It, it would have been too difficult for them to do it, and obviously this is what we're seeing, the outcome of it. Which I think is kind of odd because anytime I ever talked to anybody about Mixer or heard anything about Mixer, everybody always had positive things to say about that community, about how it was a better better gaming community than Twitch was and how they enjoyed going there when they enjoyed going to Twitch. So I don't understand how Mixer couldn't have – didn't blow up like it should have except for the fact that maybe they didn't have the, uh, the – what they call the e-thoughts, you know, doing the gaming. And I just yeah, – um... you know, a mixers, mixers rules TOS in terms of services were actually a little bit uh, harsher than Twitch's. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was a, a lot more difficult to be on there and be like not politically correct. Like if you were warrant, Mixer wouldn't advertise you. You would get like strikes. But it was like they, their threshold to become like a partner, like or an affiliate, like on Twitch. It was a lot. It was a lot easier to get there. But yeah. the, th- the thing is, is that like bringing people to a new platform, let them know what it is and how, how it works. Like That's it, hard. It, it's, it's difficult because not a lot of people want to move off their, like their everyday, what they're comfortable with. Yeah. What they're comfortable with. So RIP to mixer. Uh, what do you guys have to say? 
I mean, this <laughs> Facebook gaming thing sound, looks interesting, but my only issue, and this has been my only issue, not just with Facebook, but Twitch as well, is this whole political correct bullshit. I feel like uh, I think the best content is without that uh, hindrance. But I mean, hey, you know, I think who knows? Maybe Facebook is is trying to rev it up to go after Twitch. Who knows? We'll we'll, we'll see how it comes in the future. Yeah, I don't know about Facebook gaming. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people I talk to when you mentioned Facebook, they're like, man, I hate that shit. You know, so I don't know if Facebook gaming is really, really going to be even the best best place for them to go to, um, just because the, the name Facebook is on it. You know, they probably should have left it with the name Mixer. And moved to Facebook Gaming and just kept it, you know, moved, really integrated Facebook Gaming into the into that whole platform, and left the name Mixer because I think that's that's got a better, I said that's that's got a more uh, pleasure pleasurable sound when people think about it than Facebook Gaming because you know you hear about Facebook you get all this all this extra crap going on with Facebook as far as political posts all that other stuff and people don't want to associate with that at all, mm-hmm. and now you're gonna now you're gonna put the other platform into that like I said it should have been the other way around it should have been Facebook Gaming going into Mixer. And just kept it as it was and let them run with all the platforms they had and just, you know, use that name but trying to integrate their own stuff into that name, you know? Yeah, it's just that if they were going to do that too, it's like, do you really want the loser's name to be covering your name? <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause, yeah. That's true. Because as far as, like, the numbers were concerned, the Facebook gaming was gaining, like, a percentage over Twitch versus, like, Mixer, which wasn't. I mean, it was, it was fairly... But- there again, look at all the shit that Twitch is going through right now. They may not be the number one next week. You never know what's going to happen, you know. And then Mixer could have been. That's true. At that point, and see, this is this is such a fickle this is such a fickle uh, market. You never know what's going to happen from month to month. So this this could have been, you know, it could have they would have stepped like that, and it, it, that could have been a breaking point for Twitch. And then Mixer could have picked up after that, and then they would have been they would not have been the losers. They would have been the number one on top. So you never know what could have happened. You know? Yeah, but. I, exactly like you you don't you didn't even know this was all happening to twitch either that's what i'm saying like mixer yeah. mixer's got to watch out for mixer not mixer like watch out for wa- twitch wa- yeah. looking at what twitch is doing you know what i mean with their yeah. drama so yeah. it, it made sense for mixer i mean microsoft didn't really care it's just another streamer uh another right. way to make some revenue but it wasn't so it's better just to sell it off and then uh, continue using your Project X Cloud uh, platform to continue boosting that. So it, it made sense to me. I'm like, yeah, Facebook Gaming was better. Actually, whenever I talk about it on stream, I'm like, if I was ever to move off of Twitch, it would have either been YouTube Gaming or Facebook Gaming because, like, Mixer just it, it it it's not appealing. Like like there it feels like well, it's like not dry. that hard. It, it feels that dry. Hard, like actually. it doesn't feel like there's anything there. But anyways, yes, Mixer's dead. R.I.P. Uh, congratulations to Shroud and Ninja, though. Fuck, that's a lot of money. Uh, but moving on. This also this week we got a Cyberpunk 2077 Nights yeah. episode. Uh, apparently they're gonna be showing more content from their game. Uh, this is uh also after the fact that they delayed the game again. <laughs> but uh, yes, Night City. Uh, did you guys watch it? What did you think? Well, uh, um, well, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mine, mine's just a mine's just a uh, snarky comment. Go ahead. Oh, no. No, don't make it no, I want to hear this. I was going to say, to me, it looked like GTA 2077 is what it looked like, you know, so. Okay, well, for me, <laughs> I saw the, the new story trailer. Um, I saw the gameplay. I watched the Night City uh, event. And, man, this game looks badass. It really, really does. Um, you know, the way they made it seem was that it, everything's going to be very seamless. Specifically, when you, there's no loading screens, mm-hmm. but it seems like you'll be, like, in a car or in a train, and you can still look at the city, see the visuals. It looks like they took their time. Uh, the graphics are just amazing out of this world. I don't think, honestly, I'm kind of glad they pushed it back. Because these type of graphics deserve to be seen in a new console, <laughs> not, yeah. not Xbox One, in my opinion. Uh, but they did show gameplay. Uh, they did show car. I thought the car, uh, the driving, did seem a little bit like GTA. But still, it, there's no harm in it. Um, oh no, I, I'm not saying that as a bad thing. I just say it's just, just just kind of what it looked like for yeah. me. You know, it's like a, a future version of GTA is what it seemed like. So. Well, and they also have like these these things where you can go in detective mode, like Batman. Um, that looked interesting as well. Uh, they had like the customization uh, on your characters, how you start, and all this was basically the very beginning of the game, mm-hmm. which I thought was very interesting. There's a lot of content 
it makes me think that this game is going to be a very, very long game. And it's very open world-ish in a way. I still feel like it's a little bit like, you know how you mentioned in, 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 uh, the, uh, in the Hump Day show, Elias, like a sandbox? Mm-hmm. I think this is kind of like that. Yeah. Maybe not all the way, but in a little bit. But I'm pumped. You got to see the Badlands as well. Kind of reminds you a little bit of, of, of Mad Max. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just amazing. It pumped me up, and I'm glad that they're taking their time. And we also know a few people went and played the actual fucking game. Um, I know Skill Up, uh, the one that I referred to in the last uh, episode uh, of the podcast that he did a very good review on The Last of Us 2, Skill Up had a chance to play it, and he liked it. He thought it was awesome. He said, like, the one thing that really bothered him was uh, when you went to detective mode because it slowed things down. I guess I can understand that point of view, but he said other than that, the game was pretty, pretty good. So I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm pumped up. I hope it comes out for the next gen consoles, and more than likely, I'm going to buy it since Xbox is the more stronger uh, um, hardware than PS PS5. I'll probably stick to to Xbox on that one. All right, JD. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. It actually does look pretty interesting to play. I said, you know, I'm making a comment about it being GTA 2077, but it actually looks like it could be a lot of fun. Um, hopefully. I mean, again, we're seeing cutscenes mostly. We're not really seeing a whole lot of gameplay, so I want to get, I want to see some actual gameplay out of it. See what it looks like as far as the consoles go, and then we can determine from there. But yeah, I, th- I think you're right. I think it's going to play a lot better and look a lot better on the uh, Series X and PS5 uh, rather than the current consoles, just because it's going to have a better resolution rate and a better, mm-hmm. you know, frame rate. So hopefully, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, but but they, they they did have gameplay though. Did they have? I didn't. I didn't yeah, they had, I guess, they had I guess what I saw game. didn't have gameplay. I just saw I just saw like a trailer version. So. Yeah, they oh, okay. Had no, no. They had gameplay. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, during the presentation, they were just showing the Night City mm-hmm. episode, but they had uh, different publications, different uh, journalists, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, that actually played the game. Then after the episode aired, they released their gameplay content. So there's a bunch of gameplay. Oh, out you there. know what? I, I did miss that part. I was because yeah. I did. I saw the cinematic trailer, but then I had some stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, I, I, I haven't. Yeah. I actually haven't seen all yeah. the gameplay, but I did see like the episode, and I was like. Oh, it is okay. It looks cool. I mean, it's more cyberpunk. I mean, at this point, I'm just I'm already gonna get it. So I'm like, okay, like you don't have to sell. Oh, me I see. The, you don't have to sell so me on this anymore. Up? No, you I mean for up? what? <laughs> I, they already sold I me am. on it. Like I'm already gonna get it. Like now, I'm just waiting to play the game. <laughs> I, I get, I get, I can see what you're saying. I think the reason for me, the reason I'm pumped up, is because this was the year I was gonna buy video games, and um, you know, Resident Evil Three was. It wasn't a disappointment, but it wasn't up to par like I thought it was gonna be. And then, of course, the last was everyone knows how I feel about that. Um, so ten this is something ten. again, my ass. <laughs> um, so uh, you know, th- this is something I've been excited about, and I'm really hoping they come in the clutch with this. I, and from the looks of it, from what I'm seeing. It looks like they did. And they, as I said, they did show gameplay. We also know they're going to release an anime in 2022. Uh, so that that's something I, that I liked as well. Oh, yeah. There's an anime coming to Netflix. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To Netflix, yeah. Uh, oh, that's uh, that's that too. would make a good anime, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on to the final subject. Here. Yes. Marvel's Avengers. New Another gameplay. One. More gameplay Another is one. surfaced from this game. Um, I didn't get to see it, but I was watching a little bit of the little bit of the preview here. Uh, what do you guys think? Did you guys see it? Did you guys enjoy it? What do you thought? Yes. Yes. Excited. I liked it. I think the one thing that sold it for me, because there's little things I didn't like, but the one thing that sold it for me, um, is the fact that you can play with, and the same missions, same same war missions, uh, with all of your friends. I thought that was really cool. Uh, I think I think that's a good setting point. Um, the customization on your characters, uh, the way you can change costumes, the way you can update those costumes, uh, the different characters you can play. Um, they didn't show too much story. It was more focused on the war room, um, war zones, yeah. how you can play with your friends and interact with each other. They did show a lot of gameplay on Thor, and I thought that was pretty cool. My favorite part, I don't know if you saw it, James, is like where he's flying, and mm-hmm. while he's flying, they're aiming with the controller, yeah, and like was, was, was bolts weird. of lightning. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was badass. The lightning and with, with the hammer, we just go, dum, 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 dum. okay, thank you. Yeah, you know? and then like, uh, you know, you got to see Hulk, uh, uh, Black Widow, Iron Man. Um, you got to see how it, your power-ups, if you power up and you do your special, how it can affect your, your teammates. Yep. Uh, so it looked very interesting to me overall. The gameplay, though, seems a little clunky. A little clunky. I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, maybe, Elias, because you're more into the whole tech, techie side. It looked a little clunky to me. Um, I think another issue is characters 
I really don't know what the hell is this character with this big old wannabe Mr. Fantastic hands and all that shit. I really don't want to play Marvel. Is that her name? Miss Marvel. Yeah. Well, whatever. I don't want to play her. Um, I'm already annoyed by her. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, because I don't know who she is. I've never seen her character. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, I, I, like, I, I think she's kind of pretty recent. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I haven't that's seen my her point. Else, so. I was I was thinking that too. I was like, man, they per- they probably just created this character like recently, and they just want to shoot it down her throat. She's been in the comic books for a while. It's just I just, I just haven't. Um, I mean, I haven't, I haven't I, really read comic books in a few years, so I don't know. I don't know my. Yeah, character. maybe it's she's new. I don't know. But uh, it looks pretty good. We know who the main villain is. Um, uh, Mordon, I believe his name Mordok. is Mordon. Murdoch, uh, yes, from the no, no, Mordok. 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 No, it's it's Mo- it's Modok or Mordok. Modok. Modok. I know he's okay. But this makes me think that the X Men might be involved here because Modok is a mutant. So it kind of makes me like yeah, they could put that in as late as a later DLC, you know? Yeah, maybe I'm thinking. Yeah. But, I mean, they did inform us there was going to be a lot more characters to play with, so I'm looking forward yeah. to that. Who knows? Spider-Man might be swinging around that, that mid. So I'm pumped up for it. I liked it. Uh, I just wish they had a little bit more on the story. The story looks entertaining. The voice acting is really damn good. I had, yeah. I, I was really surprised by a lot of the voice acting that I that, that I heard. I was it's, like, wow, uh, really good. Troy Baker and Nolan North. Yeah, Troy I'm Baker, just... who plays Joel. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of I'm kind of sad. Is it that 10 out of 10? Hey, I'm kind of they didn't use the actual actors from the game, from the movies though. I mean that's, but it makes sense because this is not from the movies. Yeah, yeah this well, is a different storyline. So, just, sorry to interrupt. Just one comment. Yeah, right. I have no problem with Troy Baker. Uh, my issue with Last of Us is not with him. He's just a voice actor. He he's given lines and he does his lines. So I have no problem with Troy Baker. Yeah, no, I, I mean you did see some some of the storyline. You kind of got a little bit of an idea of what's going on. You don't have a full concept. Um, and I think I did like the idea that they're that looks like, again. It's it's five years after a major event with the Avengers. They're not. I mean, you know, this is nothing. That you have to understand. This has nothing to do with the movies at all. This is not anything tied in. Yes, correct. At all. This is a completely different storyline. This is more of a comic book storyline. But I do like the whole comic book costumes, like the iconic costumes from like the '60s. Yes. I love that. You know that you can that you can unlock that stuff. I love the customizable characterization. So that you know, like I said, you know, you could be playing Iron Man. You'll have different customized customized stuff than I might have in my Iron Man. You know, and that'd be kind of cool too. Well, yeah. no, they said that you can only. So, like for example, if we're if me, you, and Elias and those are playing, and those picks uh, Black Widow, and Elias picks the Hulk. Uh, I'll get Thor, or you get Iron Man, or I get Iron Man. But in, Thor. in so some of the multiplayer, like the, um, some of the other stuff, you make like I said, like if you create, I'm just saying, like you create an Iron Man. You might have a whole bunch of different stuff on yours. Mine yes. is completely different. You know, I can I right. have different different trees, customized customized trees you can use, different armors, different. Abilities. And they did say you they know. did say they will be DLCs, but it will be free. The only thing you will have to purchase is costume content, which I'm okay with, guys. If you want to spend money on costume, yeah. that's on you. You know, but as far as everything but else, it'll be free. A lot of the costumes are going to be unlockable in the game itself too, so that's another good thing. You know, so some of this, yeah, some of the some of the big stuff will probably be you know paid a little extra paid for, but a lot of the majority of the costumes are going to be unlocked inside of the uh, like the multiplayer content and the and the, and the yeah. story content. So, are you going to get it, Elias? Yeah, I was going to get it when it was first debuted. Oh, okay, okay. Another yeah, game there I'm already sold on. Just give it to me already, man. Right. Hey, it comes out the same time as the uh, the boys. So I mean, that's gonna be a big a big day for all of us, you know. So. Yes. Yes. All yes. All right, yes. ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna be it for us today. Thank you so much to everybody Thank who you. stopped by and listened on all pack pot pat. Why can I speak today? Podcasting platforms like Spotify, oh, Anchor, and Apple Podcasts. But before we go. What's everybody's final punch? Um, final punch. Uh, this whole Twitch thing is it's like it's fucked up. I feel like there's a lot of drama involved in it, and usually I'm the type of person that I'm like, ah, hell no. Nah. So I'm pretty sure that's gonna affect Twitch in the long run. Did he? Uh, my final thing again. You know, we just had a, of course. You know, we all know we just had a notification here in Houston. My folks have been doing some some looking up on it. Houston has now become one of the number of hot spots for COVID nineteen. So please, please everybody, be safe, be careful. It is not that hard to wear a mask. You don't even have don't even have to wear it all the time. Just wear it when you're outside your car or outside your house. Just be safe because this thing is serious. This thing is real. We are not out of the first wave yet. We are still in the first wave right now because we have not got our numbers down. So be careful. Everybody and just try to be, try to maintain, you know, as best you can. You know, I mean, it just 
piggybacking off of what JD said, it's so hard to be. I understand why JP does it now all the time. Like when I that that whole I told you, you know, I told you I was right, you know, kind of thing. But people don't want to believe it. People want to act like they, they want to act like this is a game. But yeah. no, this is real. People dying. Yeah. But anyway. I mean, yeah, I mean, look at Lowe's. Lowe's over here hitting up bars right afterwards and telling people yeah, to wear masks. But you over here, wearing... if you're going out, wear a mask. Six feet apart. Wear a mask. Mm. Not like, that hard. Not don't that be hard. going around hugging everybody. All right, just you know, do do what they did in the uh, Demolition Man, where they just pretend they slap each other and then they do the round hand thing. You know, that movie's a classic. That movie's a classic. All right. But uh, I guess my final punch would be. I don't know. I just started playing Resident Evil 7 again on PC. It's fun. Uh, get into it, Leon. Get it. Resident uh, Evil 8. Oh, all of a sudden, like, okay, so I was at a job for a while, like two months, and all of a sudden, like, I'm getting all these offers, but now I'm like, man, I'm about to go get COVID if I go working outside, but fuck it, you know, I, pay, I got bills to pay. You got bills to pay. <laughs> I'll but, send you uh, I'll a link for some gloves that, I, that we got for me that are really comfortable, and they're actually going to, yeah, they can, you can, like, spray them down with Lysol to keep them clean if you need to. They won't, it won't hurt them. No, nah, I'm just walking around with the, the oven mitts. I got, like, several of those. You do too. But, I mean, these these are actually, like, they're, like, finger finger gloves, and they work, they fit oh, really comfortably. Oh. Yeah, you can finger them, yeah. Um, but they fit real comfortable. Oh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for listening and watching. You can find, you can also find us and talk to us on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, and in your mom. And if, of course, if you have Woo! any comments on anything we talked about today, please leave it on the YouTube comments below. Let us know. We do answer, reply. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Peace. Peace out.